Thank you for joining us. Welcome, everybody. We're here for our uh, Facebook Live uh, session. Um, I'm veteran coach Dr. Mike Smith. All right. And I'm joined by Coach Marbet Marbiela Gutierrez. All right. Hi. And we'll be going again over the orthopedic conditions uh, uh, and how to get those things service connected. Um, we will kind of do give veterans a chance to kind of come in for the first couple minutes to make sure everything is going uh, well and then kind of get into the room before we actually start the presentation. Okay. And uh, basically it just talks just a bit about uh, the orthopedic conditions, things like if you're having issues with the uh, bad knees or a sore back, um, orthopedic conditions, the things that bend, right? The things that have joints. Mm -hmm. we'll start it soon enough and go over some pointers on how to kind of look into those and get those connected. Where are everybody checking in from? Good morning, Ricky. Welcome. It definitely is a great morning. Absolutely. Jerry Burton, good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Again, just anxious to get started just in a few minutes. People coming in. Good morning, everybody. Uh, somebody from Maryland. Uh, when did you serve? What year did you serve? Juan Lombard. <laughs> yeah. Philip, 78 to 81 Army. Welcome. Thank you for your service, you guys. California. Florida, Texas. Chuck. <laughs> Absolutely. Aurora from California, San Diego. I'm from Cali, too. That's right. Enrique Martinez from Texas joining us. Thank you. Welcome. Eddie Peters, Chino, California. You're not too far. Uh -huh. Donita McDonald, welcome. Somebody from Virginia, Cleveland, nice. Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> I was going to move there. I went to school okay. in Cleveland. Right. Really? Wow, awesome. Charlie, welcome. Mississippi. Good morning from Savannah, Georgia. Absolutely. Sherry from Mission, Texas. Nice to have all of you guys here. Doing, doing well. How's the weather where everybody is? Right. It's sunny over here. I'm in, I'm in Maryland, and it's a little hit or miss. In the same day, it's like hot and cold, and it doesn't know what it wants to do. So I think somebody else was around, you know, east coast of Maryland. <laughs> Pensacola, Florida. Woo! <laughs> Welcome, Rob. We have Rick Dowry from U.S. Marine Corps. Welcome, Ricky. you guys. Thank you. Jose, I saw a veteran Jose. Can you believe it's about five after already? See how this starts to go. No, <laughs> it's awesome. We'll get started in a couple couple minutes. We got anywhere from sunny and cool to Buddy snow. <laughs> a ninety high. In Disney World area. Hi, Donita. Welcome, you guys. So, oh, we we definitely don't want this to be, you know, just before we get started, we we, we won't want this to be. I have a we have a presentation that will go over that just kind of looks at the orthopedic conditions: your neck, your back, your shoulder, your knees and hips, your feet, um, and and then what that looks like with regards to how you can get um those things connected um and so just 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 another minute or two we will go over uh the presentation and then we'll leave some time within the hour uh to do a question and answer from anybody have any you know we'll throw out field some questions maybe from the chat line uh and just get started that way and 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 whether you're in the program or thinking about the program, whether you have a coach or just at the, you know, learning information stage, hopefully everybody gets something out of it uh, as well. And you'll be able to reuse this. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so just another minute and then we'll get started. Hey, everybody. JD. Y'all making us feel good over here, just shouting out your information. 
You know, I love, I love it. It. <laughs> just some transparency before we get started. We get nervous as coaches doing these things and sessions sometimes too. Absolutely. Even though it's information that this is my first of. one. <laughs> so we'll do well. Um, I think now it's time to get started, and we'll just kind of start the information, uh, you know, and, and go from there. So we'll we'll run through it, and then uh, we'll field questions again after we round out uh, on the information and kind of go from. All right. We'll let that load its way and we'll just get started, you know, and just to, just the information that went out about the VA orthopedic conditions um, and pursuing your claim. Uh, again, we wanted you to join the lives and just the, the, the question about, hey, you got bad knees, a sore back, you know, joining us today. Are they sit, stiff? Maybe your back is sore. Your shoulders are painful. Um, you know, do you, did, when was the last time you woke up without pain? And so we'll go over some of those things and how it looks uh, to be uh, connected and some of the things that can be connected just based on uh, these conditions you may already be living with. OK, basically how to get a rating uh, you deserve for these painful conditions. All right. So just a bit of a disclaimer. We are not accredited agents, BSOs, attorneys or any other entity recognized by the Department of Veteran Affairs. Uh, the VA, we are not affiliated with the VA in any way. The VA Claims Insider is an education-based coaching consulting company uh, for disabled veterans exploring eligibility for increased VA disability benefits and who wish to learn more about that process. VA Claims Insider also connects veterans with vetted independent medical professionals in our referral network for medical examinations and independent medical opinions for a wide range a uh, wide range of disability conditions, okay? And so we just went over the uh, uh, the uh, disclaimer. This is not, a, again, like a coaching class per se, specific to the conditions, but it is to give you a broad uh, sense. So uh, for the agenda, we got principles of musculoskeletal systems. I thought it was uh, necessary just to talk about a few principles. Um, we also go over just from shoulders, arms, spine orthopedic conditions, and then lower extremity conditions. And we will leave about a 15 minute buffer uh, to, to, to have any discussion about question and answer uh, from that perspective, the things that you might have picked up. Um, and then this should uh, uh, kind of live uh, so that you can reference this back at some point. So when we talk about the musculoskeletal system, okay? Um, just some principles as it relates to your disability uh, and the, the potential for disability uh, in, in general. So when we talk about the things that are, are needed uh, to have uh, uh, issue connected for disability, we mentioned things like seen and treated for it on active duty, right? You have to have uh, paperwork or information that you have a back or a knee or whether it's an x-ray or some old notes. If you had an injury, jumping out of planes and helicopters, whatever it may be, um, you have to have ongoing signs and symptoms. Right. So up to date diagnosis or symptoms uh, is what you also have to have. And then the third thing, you have to have a clear link or medical nexus, somebody's medical opinion that believe A is connected to B. And so, um, you know, in the general scope of healthcare, that might not come out, but that's where you get uh, and fill in some of the needs that you have. So I just wanted to start. We wanted to start this presentation about a bit about the principles of getting a musculoskeletal system issue connected for disability. So if you have a knee, for example, that's on the, the menu or on a, on a claim, uh, what has to happen as any part of any rating, you have to have accurate measurements, all right? So part of the, uh, uh, the need is to that the examiner, the person that you're gonna get rated through, uh, it is essential that the necessary information, uh, that, the, that the necessary information to rate your condition is recorded by the physician in your exam. They have to measure how much range of motion or movement you have or don't have. It's key, right? Um, and so that all ranges of motion should be measured with a goniometer, all right? That's a, you'll see a picture, uh, but that's a measuring device with two arms on it with the information on this page. You, you should know what needs to be measured and recorded. Uh, and you wanna make sure that this happens correctly to ensure that you receive a proper rating. Right. In, in, in essence, uh, if they're not measuring you appropriately or using the appropriate device during your claim process or during the CMP exam, um, you know, you could you could be missing out 
on a condition that uh, should be rated at a disability level uh, to compensate you is the main thing. And so um, in continuing with the principles uh, from looking at things, musculoskeletal connection, well, um, I, I like to draw attention to my uh, veterans about functional loss. All right. So when we look at functional loss, primarily the inability due to damage or infection to perform the normal working movements of the body with normal excursion, strength, speed, coordination, and endurance. It may be due to pain uh, and supported by other pathology issues as evidenced by the visible behavior of the claimant undertaking the motion. All right, and I wanna be sure, this is just principles, but just to kind of slow that down again, it may be pain and it's supported by evidence by the visible behavior of the veteran, right? Undertaking the motion. If you have weakness, is as important as a limitation of motion and a part of what becomes painful on use must be regarded as seriously disabled. And so just without a, a lot of words, what that, you know, take it to mean is if even if something bends, which is how we sometimes measure the loss on the, these exams, know that if, if you bending it repetitively and it, it, it causes visible behavior, a shaking or wincing or some, you know, mm -hmm. pain, then that too should be taken into account, right? Uh, taken into account. And so just knowing that as the veteran are some things that you would want to consider as you're looking to kind of get these orthopedic conditions or see if your orthopedic conditions can be connected, okay? Dr. Mike, Yes. question. So let's say you have a, cl a client that has a veteran that has painful emotion, and would that be also considered as, as functional loss because you're not able to move normally like you normally would? That's a very good, uh, excellent question. The answer is yes, right? The short answer is yes, right? So sometimes we we, we get the idea that, you know, you can you need movement, mm -hmm. but absolutely. I think there's something on, and I appreciate the question, 30 ACFR that talks about like wincing. So if you, you know, mm -hmm. you and wince, you know, that's what it's, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Nervous, all of those things can come out, um, you know, or, or, and I tell, um, you know, just explain, veterans to feel that they have a voice in that space to say it hurts when i do this or if i do Absolutely. this it might hurt for a weekend or whatever your truth is very good question yes all right Absolutely. all right and so we talked a bit a bit, bit about that act at you know accurate measurement and using a goniometer the measuring device to see whether your back or shoulder knee or you know uh, otherwise uh, moves and bends in that appreciable way, along with like the limitation of, of, of motion and function uh, to the question. Yes. Okay. All right. So just uh, the musculoskeletal system and the schedule uh, of rating, right? Just a bit about some a general overview of how they do things, certain things like the shoulder, uh, arm, the elbow, the wrist. And this speaks to some of that, you know, with, when limitation of motion and the joint is involved, is non-compensable, the rating is, is, is of 10%, 10%. Uh, is applied. And so something can move, but it moves with pain uh, is the thought process, right? And so, you know, it speaks to that you know, from a shoulder standpoint. And I just wanted to kind of have us have a bit about some of the illustrations with regards to these and what that might look like, right? And so you can see in the illustration how they have Right, so the, the, the shoulder outright in 90 degrees and turning and in, 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 uh, in turning the hands uh, at, at that point. Right. So um, it's not just a function about uh, how well these move or not. But again, you could have painful range of motion or think of it in the context of a, somebody with a shoulder issue not being able to put some luggage and they're traveling the luggage. When it comes to that. Right. So, so those are some of the challenges that I try to have uh, veterans as a coach understand about that process when it is you're up against that uh, exam period. OK. All right. Um, and I want to touch. I just want to kind of uh, mention it and just uh, if there's any questions to kind of ask it just just like you mentioned. But um, getting to the point of where you go from things on paper. Hey, I have a spine condition. Right. We would ask those things. Do you have the information to be able to put up uh, this condition as a claim? Right. Do you have 
proof uh, or, or by virtue of a, a physician exam or some kind of, uh, uh, you know, notation that you were injured, you know, on duty. Do you have proof? You can't file for a claim and expect to win it. If, for example, you say my back, you know, has hurt from 10 years ago, but you haven't gone to the doctors to have that same back pain evaluated and looked at in the last, you know, three to four years, so to speak. Right. And so radio mm -hmm. is fine just in that space. If there's abnormal contour, things like scoliosis or if you have spasms uh, or if you guard your spine movement. So guarding a movement, you don't want to move too soon. Right. You can get a 20 percent for things like that. Um, you have to have, again, proof of the abnormal spine contour. It talks a bit about those things. Um, and if there are muscle spasms, again, or guarding present that do not interfere with the way you walk, it's a 10 percent. Right. Um, and also given to things like uh, compressed or fractured vertebrae that's lost a certain position of height. Uh, and then there's that pain with range of motion. Right. Mm -hmm. That is that's that baseline uh, that I think you asked about at the very mm -hmm. least. Right. Um, just before we kind of go again, um, there are other conditions and secondary conditions that are not under the orthopedic uh, umbrella that might be attached to things like spine and such as well. So if you're part of the, the program here as an elite member of VA Claims Insider uh, or thinking about it, that's some of the information that you can get uh, from mm -hmm. a coaching perspective and have an understanding about if they are um, concerns or issues, uh, if there are symptoms that you live with that should be or could be further uh, claimed and evaluated. Okay. So when we talk a bit about the spine, all right, we talk a bit about the spine. Um, we look at the, the idea, the function that the, the levels, whether it's cervical, spine, or what we consider the neck, okay? And how that can connect to your uh, your lumbar, it's kind of that midway and then the, the low back pain, okay? So a lot of times can be used or looked at in unison, as, as, you, know, it, you know, but sometimes they're often or even looked at and rated separately. So this schematic drawing just kind of shows you, like a, say, like a, a yes or no, edge, mid tilt about a cervical spine, right? Um, up and down, yes or no, side mm -hmm. to side, no, mm -hmm. right? And then ear to shoulder, ear to shoulder, mm -hmm. that's that flexion. And the general formula is based on the range of motion, all right? And then the image show those range of motion. So how much range of motion, how much movement does your spine have? Okay, your cervical spine have. Now, it's not about how much you can tolerate. Tolerate. You might have kind of had some, you know, challenges here. America. So, not about how much you can tolerate in movement per se. So, it's not like you're tolerating nine out of ten pain just to get that through the examination. But rather, I say on that examination, and I'm making a leap. If you submit a claim, it goes to eventually. You want to get a compensation and pension exam. And so that's what I mean when I reference the examination, not your regular doctor's visit, but you go to that examination, you want to point out that if there's a limitation or some shooting pains that happen when you attempt to go side to side, you know, nodding no or nodding yes, with that cervical neck, right? Turning and looking over the shoulder kind of stuff. Like and also measured, okay? Same thing. Uh -huh. Wait. Jump in. I'm sorry. Oh, so on that cervical neck, you know, I, you know, I have had, and you know, the range of motion, I've had veterans tell me, well, yeah, I can move all the way, flex, twist, but with pain. Yeah. And they still push through the pain, yeah. and that's where you're hurting yourself. You don't push past discomfort, you guys. You know, if you're hitting pain or discomfort, that's what you should stop. Yeah. You know, that, absolutely true, right? To, to that point, right? So when we talk a bit about, and I like to frame this, this is an excellent, another excellent point. You don't motor through or push through pain or discomfort is the idea. It's not about how much pain you can tolerate. Right. It's about when do you get pain with range of motion? So you have to tell them, that, you know, if it's small movements and it starts to hurt, you got to tell the examiner it hurts right here. Absolutely. Here. Right. That's what you meant. Absolutely. Yeah. Very, very, very key. Just a quick example. I did have a veteran. His was a, was a back. 
And so if you look at that first picture where it almost looks like they're touching their toes in that first picture to the left, he had nine out of 10 pain, he said, and he was bending down to try to um, touch it, to, to do what the, the CMP examiner asked him to do. And he still ended up getting a, a zero rating for that back. And the reality is, you know, they rated him just because he was able to bend. But what he didn't take into account was that it, it, it put him down for a couple of days and his spine was flared up. And then, you know, uh, because he was motoring through discomfort and pain. And that's, again, not the point of the exam. Good point. Absolutely nice. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you can see that left to right and uh, kind of uh, twist from the waist rotation that's similar in that uh, thoracolumbar spine range of motion measurements. All right. So this just gives you some idea. Um, and it's rated uh, often according to how much or little you move and how much pain uh, that you may have. OK. So even kind of getting some generalized spinal conditions, whether it be lumbosacral or cervical strain, uh, spinal stenosis, the narrowing uh, of the spinal column and its presses on the spinal nerves. Right. Some of you may have some of these things, uh, spinal fusion, uh, segmental instability or, or vertebral fractures. Uh, as well. And so all things to consider. Um, it's not your job, I say, to not, like know it at this level early on. You might often just notice it as a symptom, a sign, or it could have come from something that you're already connected with and experiencing and looking to it. And there you go. Um, as secondary uh, as well, they may have spinal conditions where other conditions can contribute to the severity of the spine. Uh, for example, spine conditions may also have radiculopathy, or my spine folks, low back in particular, might have heard the term uh, sciatica or the sciatic nerve, the biggest nerve coming out of that backside. Those are conditions that can actually be uh, sometimes independent and separately uh, rated, rateable, uh, connected to the back. So another thing to kind of consider, not directly in the scope of orthopedic conditions, but still can be secondarily connected to something like that. OK. Uh, just again, a generic thing about arthritis of the spine being, you know, second most common rating system. Degenerative arthritis, we see that word a lot. Um, degen degen degenerative, um, you know, that tends to be a worsening condition versus something like a strain, for example, right? And so those are some of the things that you see. A lot of these principles will apply to that uh, lumbosacral uh, uh, joints tend to be rated together, sacroiliac joint. Um, not to get too bogged down in this area, but just to give people an idea of the segments. We go, you know, shoulders, we go neck, understand uh, back, you understand like pelvis and tail bones. Um, you know, you'll see these things, old vertebral fractures, old, you know, coccyx fractures. Um, if it doesn't hurt, you know, it's, you know, it's going to be rated at zero um, if you can. But if there's discomfort, again, to your point, even a, a bit, say you got a sit down job and that your tailbone hurts or you, you're sitting with a donut or you drive for a living, all of those things are, are possible. You just got to uh, recognize the symptoms that you're going through. Okay. Um, similarly, you might see uh, things spelled out uh, I V D. S, and probably unless you're going through it, you might not know that that stands for intervertebral disc syndrome, right? So when a disc in the spine is dysfunctional, it either herniates or, you know, is bulging or degenerative or thinning. Um, it can be rated under general formula or, or it can be rated under uh, incapacitated episodes, right? And now basically, if you get these, you know, situations where you're incapacitated for periods of time, not necessarily uh, pain every day, every step. Um, then it can actually get rated uh, under whatever rating is higher in that space. And so just to give an idea about incapacitated episodes, remember the idea that the guy bent through nine out of 10 back pain, but then was shut down for a weekend, right? Um, if within the last year you were on bed rest, prescribed by your physician for six weeks or more, often rated at 60%. If within the last year you were bed rest for four to six weeks, you can get, uh, you know, 40 in it uh, on average. Two to four weeks rated at 10, one to two weeks rated at, I'm sorry, 20, uh, and, and one to two rated at 10. So you can see how, you know, two weeks versus um, 12 days, right? You know, based on the, these things can be a difference even in the rating. But just knowing what this used to say, knowing is half the battle, okay? Um, some of these things uh, with the hip, 
and thigh. You talk a bit about flexion, just points to the way that the thigh and limitation of flexion, it's not a full list, but the way it bends or doesn't bend. So if there's a limitation to, you know, you know, uh, uh, 45 degrees range, okay, versus less range 30. So the, the, the less it can move, the higher the rating. Um, and chances are you're kind of living with something strong disability wise as well. But that's just a general rule of thumb of how, how these things that bend right, are often kind of looked at according to the 38 CFR, which is the, uh, you know, what they go by, uh, Code of Re Federal Regulations, they go by to affect uh, these ratings officially, uh, you know, in, in general, okay. Um, this slide, just a bit about the limitation of motion of the knee, okay, and uh, if the knee can straighten but can't bend all the way, it's rated under that uh, code there, as you see, but if the Knee can only bend to 15 degrees, right? That's a, a, a range of motion that's it's very limited, and you can get rated as high as 30%, all right? If it can bend to 30, it's rated to 20, 45, rated to 10, uh, and 60% more in bending. See that, that diagram, how it starts at zero, being a straight line of your leg? They might have you sit on the edge of a, a table or a bed. They have to do these compensation and pension exam, these CMP exam in person when it comes to a lot of these musculoskeletal things, again, because they have to use the measuring device to measure the angles and they have to uh, um, get a true reading, an accurate reading. There's a, there's, there's a difference between if your uh, leg only bends 10 degrees versus 20 versus 46 or 43, right? If that makes sense. So. Again, much of the same talks about things about knee being frozen versus straightened out uh, as well. Okay, uh, coded differently under the five zero five five as knee replacement. Um, you can even get the first year uh, coded one hundred percent for the first year after surgery. Uh, uh, this is where people might get the temp temporarily uh, being compensated at the one hundred percent mark. Okay, and then. Um, if there's weakness, uh oh, if there's weakness, I'll go back a little bit. All right. Weakness and severe pain beyond that rating talks about 60. Uh, if the pain is not severe, but it's frozen, there's some other codes that you can do. Um, not to get bogged down here, most veterans just know it as, hey, my knee is worse or hey, my x rays are, are, are worse. And so it's always something that can be to, uh, to be considered, uh, even down to the loss or amputation. Right uh, of of a knee in uh, flexion uh, as well. Okay, um, a little unusual, a couple of unusual codes. Gender recurve bottom. That's when the knee is actually flexed backwards. Uh, sometimes it can be the result of accident, injuries, or certain weaknesses, or just instability. And that too, just kind of as it as it stands, can be rated at a ten percent. Um, and so just an idea of having too much motion, that's the instability and buckling or dislocate regularly from side to side. I talked to a veteran last night that said I had a knee replacement history. Um, and he said, uh, I walk every time and it clicks, right? I walk every time and it clicks. He has a CMP exam coming up. Um, and I told him to mention that, I, I, you know, I walk every time and it clicks, can't be heard or felt or even read in a, in a, a, a medical note. The same way that if you're in an exam and you point it out or make them hear it or make them even, you know, feel the audible clicking um, in the instability of that knee joint, then, then it, it really would work in your favor, favor uh, in that. OK, so it then just speaks about if there's only slight instability and being rated at zero or if the instability might cause the knee to buckle or dislocate every now and then um, 10. And then if it dislocates regularly, 30 percent. Okay. Oh, real quick, I just wanted to point out, it talks about if, you know, sometimes there's gray area between these things. Uh, and so it's, it's sometimes not just about if you perceive or believe or feel that it dislocates regularly, there would be an expectation if you're looking at disability that you would have communicated that routine dislocation to your medicine team, to your doctor, to your orthopedist or whomever is taking care of you for these conditions, the knee in particular, in this example, uh, you know, when it comes to disability, okay? Um, and so 
Uh, just a, a bit more, a couple uh, other ratings. Just talks a bit about not to sit here much, but um, the meniscus. If there's cartilage causing pain and swelling, locking, uh, sensation of either giving way or locking in place uh, is a thing and can be rated independently as well. Um, you know, through that process, it, the cartilage is removed. If there's pain and symptoms, and it can be 10 to 20 percent in that space. As we progress further down the lower extremity, we, we, we're getting, so be, we, we started at the shoulders, went to the neck, down to the cervical, into the hips, at the knee, hips and thighs, at the knee, now we're into the leg bones, um, the tibia and fibia. Uh, we see the, the 5262 code. This code just responds to, uh, uh, responds to the, uh, the 38 CFR coding uh, as well that they use for disability uh, rankings. This is not good, uh, good but. Any problems with the tibia or fibula bones in the lower legs are rated under that code. If there is a complete break in either bone that can't heal and requires a brace, it's 40%. All right, so um, people might have things that are called like malunions or nonunions, where you had a fracture or some history and it didn't heal, right? Or, you know, you, you get this prolonged uh, non healing issue that not, might need an ankle foot orthosis or some kind of bracing, knee or otherwise. Okay, something to consider while you're looking at these orthopedic conditions that may get rated. Okay, uh, all other conditions are rated by uh, how they affect the knee or ankle joint. Okay, if there are serious problems, can barely use it at all, tends to be a 30%. If the joint can be used but significantly limited, rated at a 20 or a 10 in that space as well. Okay, so again, not to get too bogged down in the uh, uh, the, the specifics of it all, uh, but ankle limitation of motion can go anywhere from not service uh, to zero to 10. And then it goes up based on if there's marked issues, uh, uh, range of motion in that at the ankle joint, less than 30%. Uh, and then uh, plantar flexion, that's range of motion between 30 and 40 uh, and limitation up to 10% in another way. And so it can get up there based on how much of those bones in the ankylosis condition, say in the ankle, are stopping the range of motion for you long term. And that's the rable issue. Okay. Um, getting into a bit about uh, the, the, the feet, okay? Pes planus, that's a generic name that you often will hear. Uh, flat foot, all right? It can be rated if it occurred over time is often the result of exercise or other service-connected activities and causes pain, deformities, and or limitation of function, right? Rec right Recognize um, that mild, if the pain is relieved by shoe inserts or art supports, then the position is rated zero, okay? And so this is, you know, just peculiar just to get to it versus mo uh, moderate. A 10% rating is given if there's pain that cannot be relieved by inserts. So how many times, how many veterans um, do you have that might have foot conditions and uh, they've either given you something, prescribed something, told you to try something, shoes, bracing, even custom-made orthotics or devices. And if it's taking the pain away, read what it says. If the pain is relieved, that means you put the inserts in and I have no more pain. Um, this is not to give people symptoms, but that's not often um, the protocol or, or how things work. You still have life and you still have, you know, other conditions and you still have uh, responsibilities. A lot of times some people are in wheelchairs and don't even have these re responsibilities because their pain or their feet have, you know, uh, prog uh, progressed worse or gotten worse. And so just recognize that these are some of the baseline levels uh, of it. You know, you ask a pain, a veteran, how long they've been in pain or when was the last time you remember before you had pain and they can barely remember a lot of times. And so just recognize that the 10% rating given if there's pain that cannot be relieved by inserts. You try them, then maybe even it's better, but it still hurts, right? There's a, there's a pathway there potentially. Often also, if there is bowing of the Achilles tendon, all right, and weight bearing over the big toe instead of throughout the entire foot. Basically in your normal standing, uh, your muscles and tendons and bones will do a thing uh, with or without your, your permission, so to speak. And so even if we look at the flat feet as we mature or gain weight, those arches can just 
fall or, or not just fall, but can decrease and become um, uh, lower, leading to other mechanical things over time. OK, and both feet cannot be individually rated if they're only severe enough to rate a 10 percent. You won't get to just kind of the highest level in that space. All right. Severe uh, flat foot is considered severe if there's obvious deformity, like pronation and abduction, significant pain, swelling, and calluses that are built up in the abnormal areas. If there's only one foot has it, then it's 20%. If both feet have severe flat foot, uh, under that change is 30%, right? And so if a, a, a veteran, when it talks about a con uh, considered severe, if there's obvious changes like pronation, abduction, significant pain, swelling, and calluses, how would they know if you have significant pain, veteran group, right? How would they know, right? How would they know? Especially, let's say they didn't take the time to ask you. You explain it to them, <laughs> the pain, right? So. I have significant pain. I have pain when I try to go or when I try to, you know, move my feet or when I walk certain distances or certain time frame. Well, I don't remember the last time I had pain, um, you know, or walk to my bathroom without pain, you know, since these feet have been, you know, injured while I was marching or, 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 or playing, you know, uh, in the band or uh, rucksacking or, or jumping out of planes, whatever the case may be. OK, uh, rocking. Um, and so. When it talks a bit about severe versus pronounced, the worst flat foot causes serious pain and tenderness to the sole of the foot. You can only walk on the inside of the foot and the Achilles tem uh, tendon spasms when touched, when touched. Uh, and the symptoms can't be relieved by art support. One foot is rated at 30, if that's the truth. And then both are rated at 50. And there are people with 50 percent, um, you know, as well. And so. You know, think if, if, if people exist with where a callus might build up or calluses build up, it might be an indication that your, your foot is depressed or, or flatter in certain areas um, than not uh, as well. And so if you haven't gone and you know got these things or haven't been to an orthopedic specialist, haven't gone to your doctor, if it's been some time, that's one thing that we always you know recommend that you effectively communicate your symptoms. Um, you know, so that your doctor can either give you an appropriate x-ray or get you an appropriate brace, um, you know, not taking no for an answer, especially if you're dealing or living with symptoms already. Okay. And uh, as we kind of just come in uh, uh, and round out for the, before we get to the question and answer session uh, over the next five, five minutes, we talk a bit about um, just mentioning uh, broken, just got a couple of session, uh, uh, slides. So broken bones in general, especially in the foot, uh, has its own code, especially when not healed properly or at all. It's rated on how badly it affects the functioning of the foot, right? Is it just a bit painful, quote unquote, uh, but the overall foot function is okay, then it's 10% rated, right? Something more serious, possibly causing significant pain, possibly significant pain. How would they know? You got to express this pain. You can't not have seen somebody right at the last years and then just kind of talking like, yeah, it hurts a lot. But, you know, document it, you know, or expressing the pain when you get a chance. OK, something that's very serious that uh, uh, significantly affects uh, the use of the foot. But the, but the foot can still be used. Also can be rated uh, at 30 percent. OK, just keep that in mind. All right. And then there are just a few uh, additional considerations when it looks like some of these um, issues. We talked a bit about, again, flat foot. If you see in the upper right hand, pronation, uh, is, what does it mean to be the pronation? And so the big toe is on the left hand side, the little toe or the fifth toe is on the right hand side in that picture. And your heel just kind of sags in a bit. You can see it a bit more in the bowing of the Achilles tendon picture. Right. You you. You and then if you're experiencing these things that it often comes up, come up as some kind of issue to the foot, um, you know, to, to that area. Maybe it's a callus or painful to certain bones or bone structures that normally would not be painful. OK. And you see the last slide talks a bit about abduction and adduction uh, in, in that space. But the, the uh, you can't you can't know because you can't effectively watch yourself with a Boeing Achilles. All right, somebody has to be looking at you uh, really from behind to notice that that was part of that issue. So just to give you some insight. But things that you can discuss with your provider, um, you know, if you have a podiatrist or otherwise, there'll be some things to discuss with uh, him or her. OK. 
Um, additional considerations, when it just talks a bit about uh, certain measurements and things like that, um, as you see here, uh, you know, how that, how that goes uh, there with the knee extension and hip, as well as foot and ankle. Again, just some key takeaways before we get to the stay tuned question and answer, uh, uh, you know, portion of this. Um, you know, the use of it, just key takeaway. The you, if, if you are in the process of a, of a claim, okay, um, you know, you're in the process of a, of a claim, right? Um, and you get to the point, you submitted it, get to the point of a, a CMP exam. Okay, compensation and pension exam. We talk a bit about them using a goniometer, the measuring device, right? Uh, the plastic device in, 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 the, in the front. I had a veteran, for example, get a CMP exam and had they used an iPhone or some other thing, not according to that. So you just want to be sure um, that they're using it, that you understand that process before you go into that. And we'll talk a bit about it, maybe Q&A. Um, key takeaways, painful motion. We keep talking about, about this. It came up as a question. This is exactly why we, we, we mentioned it, yes, right? So that with any form of arthritis, painful motion is an important factor of disability. The facial expression, wincing, et cetera, on pressure or manipulation should be carefully noted and definitely related to affected joints. Mm -hmm. Yes, right? Um, and the intent of the schedule is to recognize painful motion with joint or periarticular, that means near the joint, uh, uh, pathology or issues as a pro uh, as productive of disability, right? And so, even painful motion near or around that area uh, is can be uh, productive of a disability. A thing that come you know uh, comes to mind is sometimes some scarring around certain conditions. The scar might be measured at a zero, but it's a painful scar, right? At over your knee surgery. So things like that to consider. Uh, just stay tuned. Um, things like VAClaimsInsider.com. Uh, Facebook, you see, you're, you're joining us here. Uh, YouTube and Instagram, we also on TikTok as well. Um, thank you. And then we're going to have a, a question and answer um, as we stop sharing uh, the slides and kind of go from there. All right, all right, all right. All right, so no issues or, or concerns at, at all. Um, just in general, we're going to actually uh uh get com uh some questions and comments uh go on uh, is that everything so uh one thing we're just gonna go over it plantar fasciitis all right so um uh and we were just having some 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 challenges uh as well uh kind of getting that get getting that over uh but i just take this time um uh plantar fasciitis the doctor might comes from the fact that I am actually a podiatrist, okay? At this stage uh, of, of life, uh, I coach now, right? Uh, so so um, plantar fasciitis is one of those conditions, yes, that can be looked to, you know, from a disability perspective, absolutely, okay? Um, this, this list that we went over is not a complete comprehensive list when we're talking about VA disability, right? And so, uh, Many of the things were generic, but it's the same idea. Um, uh, inflammation of the band of tissue, the plantar fascia does happen and can be rated uh, in that, in that uh, issue. OK. All right. Um, there are a couple questions. So we'll just pick over the last uh, 15 minutes um, to, to kind of go through some of these and get a feel for where they are with the room. OK. And so let me just pick out a couple more. And I appreciate you all putting the questions in, uh, it helps out, helps out a lot, okay? Um, how does age play into disability uh, uh, ratings, right? Um, just when we talk about specific to orthopedic conditions, it doesn't, right? If, if you served and you were uh, senior treated or affected uh, on, on that time, uh, you know, in the line of duty, um, then it doesn't play a, a part, right? Um, you know, in general terms, uh, people ask about or there's questions about uh, if you have a condition rated at, at 20%, you know, plantar fascia, can you file for pairs planus and those things? You won't get separately rated, uh, you know, for, for those conditions. Um, they'll, they'll take a look at uh, the condition and see if there's anything that they can combine and, and kind of give you the, the, the 
which higher of the two. They won't give you 20% for both, for example. So if you do have multiple conditions, multiple things, um, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely something to bring up, but just don't expect that they'll stack those things or rate them separately. Okay. All right. Uh, and so remember, one thing that I find myself saying when it comes to uh, new clients or veterans trying to glean and, and get information, OK, um, just because you have a condition or a thing does not mean that you'll be connected for it. Right. Just because you have a diagnosis, just because you, you have a plantar fasciitis now or PES planus uh, now doesn't mean you're automatically going to get connected for it when we're talking about disabilities specific to the orthopedic conditions from, you know, military veterans. Right. Um, you still have to prove it. And so the three things that we look for for any connection uh, talks a bit about one being seen or treated for it on active duty. Right. So one seen and treated for it on active duty. Uh, second is up to date or ongoing diagnosis or signs and symptoms, even if there's distance between. If you got an old note, right, you, you had a foot injury, you were seen a couple of times as an old handwritten note from duty. And that foot, you know, from 30 years ago or 20 years ago has persisted and you were seeing the doctor or seeing the VA throughout that time. Um, then we could look at, you know, you can look at getting that uh, connected. OK, getting that connected. All right. Um, again, the plantar fasciitis. Uh, some some people mention uh, the the pain coming and going. Right. Having medical records from active duty. So the scenario is they had medical records from active duty. The pain may be intermittent or comes and goes. Um, did it ever resolve? Did it ever go away? If you're asking yourself, did it ever go away? And their answer is is no. Then there's something there, especially if you have old notes. It's worth you know at least. Uh, and investigating. All right. But you can't, again, have a, a 30 year old injury. Don't go to the doctor now and expect to get that looked at in any appreciable way uh, as well. All right. There's a couple scenarios um, where there was a spinal uh, injury, uh, then surgery while on active duty, resulting uh, in a, a left foot uh, issue with a foot drop. OK, foot drop. That means you lost motion in that foot, uh, a radiculopathy in both legs, which is the nerve pain. A lot of times, um, you know, that goes goes with that. All right. And so the question was due to abnormal walking. Think about that spinal uh, uh, injury, a fusion of the spine with nerve pain in both. And now veteran walks a little differently uh, based on the fact that they have persistent pain. All right. And now their knees are bothering uh, uh, him or her. Right. And and they see somebody about it. Um, but they said that the VA uh, denied the secondary claim uh, for, for the knees. Um, should they appeal or is it fruitless as a secondary claim? All right. So just kind of get out, you know, get on my coach hat, same hat just for a second. I say they're already not paying you for this disability that you have. Right. That, you, you, you know, clearly you gave me a narrative. And so what that means is it's always worth the investigation to see if you can't go back and get that connected. The short answer is I would say yes. Right. If there's a spinal fusion history, spinal surgery, back is connected because you walk a certain way based off of those, based on the pain. And then it started to affect your knees. There is the potential to get the um, uh, knees secondarily connected if that narrative can be uh, uh, created uh, and, that, and that, that link can be, 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 be drawn. Yes is the short answer. All right. So we get a lot of other things. Uh, muscle spasms after spinal surgery. It's a thing. All right. Um, uh, uh, if a rating is a sign, there's a question about if a rating is a sign. And I know we have people at every part of the process. If, there, if a rating is a sign, Say you put up a claim and it came back 10 percent. OK. Um, uh, and then would it the rating increase as the discomfort increase as you advance in age? Yet again, not to do with age, but as if it gets worse, as the discomfort gets worse, if it's appreciated or some x-rays are, are identified as worsening then yes. Now you have to oftentimes initiate that increase. You got to be the one to draw it to the attention of the VA and say things are worse, right? To start that process. They don't just necessarily automatically kind of see that it's worse through your medical notes. Uh, but absolutely, you will be entitled to the potential look at an increase. Say it's a zero percent. So a classic example, 
veteran was uh, connected at the time that they separated, maybe in 1996, 0% for a knee, which means they had a knee condition, but it wasn't currently painful, right? Well, now, 20, 30 years later, the knee has degenerative arthritis. It degenerated. It got worse, right? Um, you, you put in a claim for, for things that get worse. Yes. Right. And so maybe, you, you, you know, it start a process where you get a new x-ray and then that's when you can get triggered that CMP or the compensation and pension exam uh, that we talked a bit about. Um, somebody asked specifically about things like calluses. There's some nuance. Right. So so calluses has to deal with pain and other thing. Can we prove that the calluses had their origin, you know, uh, in connection to, to, to service? If the answer is yes, even at a zero percent. If there's pain or there's some discomfort or some issue, then it's definitely worth uh, at least exploring the possibility. OK. All right. Um, there was a, a, a challenge where somebody had a herniated disc with a, a repaired in the neck. And now they're dealing with uh, a stenosis or narrowing of that canal. OK. Um, you know, related to carrying, you know, gear, especially in basic. Went to sit call a couple times. Symptoms noted on discharge in the in the paper, but wasn't really seen. Didn't go to sit call a lot. Uh, it's really started to affect as they age. Is there anything should do or any advice? Right. The question becomes under the, that context: Were you being treated afterwards? There is a part a presumption that even when you separate, if you were going or went to the doctor for things within a year. Uh, of your time of separation, uh, that that still may be uh, count or can be presumed to be related to your active duty uh, military uh, uh, status. OK, uh, same thing again, spinal stenosis, lumbar spine, shoulder arthritis. Yes. OK, um, how many forms are needed to co uh, complete a claim a little bit, but outside, you know, um, it all depends on the, the claim. We know 21526 easy form is the form if you got a new claim. Uh, you can also, that's online as well. So if you did these things through five steps online, it is, you know, technically all online and, and, and not a form, right? You know, to, to that, to that uh, 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 issue, all right? Needing an appointment. So effectively communicating to your doctor. Somebody say, hey, they need a podiatrist. Well, the, the, the yes, right? So what, it doesn't matter as much if, if it's private or the VA, but you have to push the issue, right? They won't know, can I have a specialty appointment, right? No, they're not enough. I tried that, but don't let it go for months and months on end. Um, if you have the VA, by the way, an effective communication of your symptoms, which is again, one third of any linking of a claim, right? Ongoing signs and symptoms. I say, use the secure messaging system. Use the VA secure messaging system to send a note or message to your doctor that, hey, uh, you know, my feet hurt. I got this spot or this callus or, uh, you know, ball of my feet are causing pain. Right. Um, and either they maybe have a podiatrist in-house or they might have to send you out a uh, community uh, uh, or otherwise. But you definitely want to push the issue, you know, when it, with regards to communicating effectively about your symptoms. Tell your doctor. Send a secure message, you know, if you are a member of the VA or if your private doctor has that ability to email or send messages. That way your symptoms aren't competing for the attention of your provider or your doctor when you finally do get that appointment that you've been needing for so, so much time. OK, um, a service connected uh, scenario for a right hand trigger finger and long finger with a zero percent connection. Uh, diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis a few years later. Um, should it be filed as a right hand trigger finger a claim or a claim for rheumatoid arthritis? OK, um, you know, and which one would be primary if you weren't seen or diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis on active duty? Almost by definition, so without seeing it, it would have to go to some other thing to try to link it to. If there's something to that, um, then it, it can it can be connected. If you have paperwork that it says it, then it can be connected uh, as well. And you see in the comments, if you want to uh, work with myself or you know other coaches or get any uh, or free uh, uh, tips or information, a 30, a thirty minute outreach, um, it, then then uh, you know that that's uh, part is in there uh, as well. Okay. All right, just another couple things. We got about uh, three minutes left to the top of the hour. Um, before we get 
uh, uh, get it all going. Um, just a few more questions as well. Uh, if your doctor or physical therapist completes the DBQ, Disability Benefits Questionnaire, that is the form that the VA has to fill out to see that you get something rated, do they usually require a CMP exam? I'm going to say yes, right? Their person has to, you know, corroborate this information. It could also be what's called a records or ACE review. Uh, it could also have all of that and still see it their way or deny you as well. Uh, so all of those things are true. All right. You mentioned wincing during an exam, during a CMP. If constant pain with use, with joint use is present, is there any other way to convey that during the exam? Thanks. Great job. Appreciate that question, Jason. Yes, you got to tell it. Right. So I say CMP exams are like a microphone. OK. Right. You know, and sometimes they're aggravating or just have to drive to them. Um, don't default to it's in the records. You should see it. Uh, if you need help with your claim, you can get started today for free. Uh, you see that uh, in the in the uh, site there. Um, uh, and then go from there. Sorry about that. Uh, left ankle musculoskeletal. We got about a minute left. We got we, we just lost it briefly uh, for a second. Uh, that's been aggravated and found to be a genetic neural condition. Do you put it for neural or stay musculoskeletal? You might be able to look at nerve pain and the musculoskeletal issue, you know, uh, for for a question. OK, how do you file appeals? It's a it's a it's a general question. But oftentimes, if there's new information, you look at something called a supplemental review. You're adding new information. Uh, if it's old information or something within a year, a high level review, we might see. Uh, there's a third lane that talks a bit about the Board of Veteran Appeals. Rarely do we go through that as long as there's um, continued information that you can look at to appeal uh, your, your claim. OK. All right. Um, uh, any uh, any other things? Uh, just in general. Um, so, brother complained to the VA for about a year, back and neck. Nothing was done. Uh, brother asked for an X-ray of his back to see what was causing it. The X-ray revealed um, that he actually had some issues. It took another six months. What I say about the condition to to send a message? That message is time stamped. So you can say it to a doctor. Whether it made, made it in a note is a different thing. But if you send it securely and tell your doctor, they can't say that six months ago I asked for this, right? They won't be able to say that kind of issue. So um, looks like we're just kind of coming in on the top of the hour. I appreciate uh, the questions and everything. I try to get to as many uh, as, as I could. Um, you know, so again, we still kind of kind of got, got them in. Um, seen and treated for it on duty, ongoing signs and symptoms. If you need our help, we have access to a medical professionals that can help you with that third thing, the nexus information, the medical opinion piece of any claim. And so I uh, thank you, um, everybody, um, whether you're insider or not currently, but I appreciate your time and patience uh, on this call today.